Now, in this video, we'll be looking at question 11a, a typical vectors and matrices question. Now, in part A, the diagram below shows two position vectors, O to A and O to B. Now, let's just, let's just pull this up a bit so that we can have a little bit more space to work with. Now, here, my friends, if you notice, uh, they, we are moving from the point O to A and the point O to B, okay? So here on our graph, we have, the, we have the diagram on our Cartesian plane. Now, position vector simply means you, you are moving from the origin to a point, okay? Here, we're speaking about the point A, so from the origin to the point A, and then we are also moving from the origin to the point B. Now, before I get into this question, there's just a simple thing I want to explain to you. Uh, on the Cartesian plane or on the graph leaf, if I'm moving to my left on the x-axis, that would be a negative direction. If I'm moving to my right on the x-axis, that would be a positive direction. Also, if I'm moving downward on my y-axis, that's a negative direction and if i'm moving upward in my on my y-axis that would be a positive direction okay so just bear those critical uh things in mind all right now pointers in mind now let's just quickly get into it they're asking us to write as a column vector in the form x y uh, a o to a b o to b and part c they want us to write in this form b to a now quickly um we could look at that if you're at the position O, if you notice, O comes first and you're moving in direc the direction to A. That's what the arrow means. So basically, we are going to position ourselves at O, okay? Now, if you should make a quick comparison, even before I really get into explaining that, let's look at the point A, my friends. And let, we are going to write down the coordinate for the point A. If you notice, the point A, when we're working with a position vector, the point A, if I should come down on my x-axis, that would be negative 1. And if I should go across on my y-axis, that would be positive 3. So the coordinate for the point A, for A, would be negative 1 on my x, comma, and that would be a 3 on my y. If you notice, as I said, you'd go across to the y. Now, we could do the same thing for our point B also, since in part B we're moving to OB in that direction. So the point B on my Cartesian plane, and let's just make a quick note. My coordinate for B is in the form, if I'm at B and I'm coming down on my x-axis, that would be 5. My x value would be 5, comma. And if I'm at the point B and I'm going across on my x-axis, that would be, on my y-axis rather, that would be the point 1, the value 1. So my coordinate for the point B is x is 5, B, um, when x is 5, the y value is 1. Now we're going to make a connection with finding the with finding the vectors with the coordinates. All right, that's simply what we're going to be doing. So in if you notice in part A now they are saying we should find the right in the form x y the pos the vector o to a and o to a would be basically if you notice my friends if I'm at the point o and I'm moving to the point A. Basically, I would have to move my x value first. So basically, I would have to move one place to my left, okay? Which would be that point there. So after I've moved one point, if you notice, A is just above this. So my x value would be negative one, negative one on my x. And from this point, I would have to go up one. Sorry, let me just change the color. I would have to go up one, two, three okay and at, at that point we would have a so i've just moved positive three on my y because i'm going up so that's a three there okay good now uh hopefully you would have made the co connection that the coordinate a uh when we wrote it in this form is negative one three and if you notice the di the direction that i've moved from my origin or the displacement o to a is the same as my coordinate. My x value is negative one and my y value is positive three. Now let's just make another connection for B now. We have O to B, so O to B, okay? And if you should look, uh, basically we would have the same, uh, the same scenario happening here, same situation. Meaning if I'm at the point, 
if I'm at the origin, the point O here, okay, I would have to move to my right to get to B, okay, that's my X movement. So first I would have to move, this would be from the origin here, I would have to move one, two, three, four, five. I would have to move five places on my X axis. So my X value here, my friends, in the vector form would be five, and I'm going up on my Y axis now. And if you notice, B is just one above my X axis there. So I've just moved one to get to the point B. So my Y value here would be one. And if you notice again, if you make that connection, we had five one in coordinate form for the point B. And when I've moved from my origin, to the point B, I have moved the same thing in vector form, 5 over 1. Okay, hope that was useful. Now let's look at part C. Now my friends, to find the vector from the position B to the point A, uh, basically, uh, this, is, this, this is pretty easy. Uh, let's just look at it quickly. If I am at the point B, let's move. We would have to move the X value first to get to the point A. Now, from the point B, basically, I would have to move to my left. So that's a negative direction. So if this is B, then I would have to move one place here. That's one. This would be two places. That's three places. That would be four. That would be five. And this would be 6, okay? So I have just moved negative 6 on my x-axis from B, and I'm going to A, okay? And if you notice, A is just above that point. So basically, what I've just moved is a negative 6. And then I'm going above. I'm going how many now from here? I'm moving 1, 2, okay? So to move from B to A, I have moved negative 6 on my x-axis, and I have moved up in an upward direction on my y so that's a positive two okay so that would be your vector and just to give you a, a thumbs up uh, another way you could work this out since we had found the vector from o to a and o to b we could just simply say then this is a this is a second method you could use you could have used you could say b to a is equal to and if you notice i would have to move we had moved initially o to b okay if we you notice here in part b we had moved from o to b so if you notice if i'm moving to a now basically i would have to move back from b to o so instead of having a o to b i would have to have a negative a negative ob because i would be going in the opposite direction okay so in this case i would have to have a negative ob and i'm adding to that O to A and our O to A, O to A, because when we have moved negative OB, we would be at the origin and now we need to move the positive OA. So basically, my friends, if we should just simply calculate these values, if we have a negative, negative OB, what we got for our OB initially, that was 5, 1. Okay, and we are adding to that a positive O to A. Let me just put my arrow head there. And O to A, we had it here up top, which is negative 1, 3. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So basically, this would be giving us here now, we have a negative sign in front of this bracket. So that's basically negative 5, and we would have a negative 1. Okay, we're simply just multiplying a negative 1 by the two values in the bracket. And I'm adding to that I'm adding to that quickly a negative 1 and a positive 3 now if you notice my friends this is pretty cool uh, what we would have here basically we have a negative 5 adding to a negative 1 so that would give us a negative 6 and we have a 3 and a minus 1 here a positive 3 and a minus 1 so that would give us obviously a positive 2 okay so i've just showed you two ways you could work that out if you notice the same answer i have here is the same answer i had there okay so that's just another way of looking at it um from the graph all right hope that was useful and in the next video we'll be looking at part two of 11a. Bye-bye.